Hey everyone, I'm Nadine and welcome to Bookish Note. Today I am doing part one of my bookshelf tour and I'm dividing it in three parts because I have three separate bookshelves that are not together so I figured I would record one of them and upload it and a week later do the next and then the next. And I just want to say a thanks to my lovely boyfriend for helping me record. What? <laughs> uh So my first shelf is more of the literary books that I read for school and accumulated myself. Um, the first book is Bram Stoker's Dracula. It wasn't what I was expecting, but I did really enjoy it. The second book is Generation X by Douglas Couplin. I read this for a Canadian literature class, and it was okay. It's not anything I would recommend. I have three copies of Jane Eyre, and one of them being Jane Slayer, the uh, retelling of it where she's a vampire slayer. I got halfway through it and I really didn't like it. Um, then I have Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I really enjoyed this one, not as much as Jane Eyre though. And if you've seen my um, college life and college books tag. I absolutely hated this book. The next book is Wizard of Oz by Frank Bohm. I really enjoyed this. I read it recently. And then 1984 by George Orwell. Another one of my favorite classics. Okay, then we have The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter, which is sort of um, a mix of a bunch of fairy tales that are rewritten. They're really um, dark and sexual. Next we have The Awakening by Kate Chopin. A lot of people don't really like this book and I actually really enjoyed it. It was a great portrayal of um, a loveless marriage. And then The Secret Garden by uh, Frances Hodgson Burnett, which was another fantastic read. I remember watching the movie as a kid, really enjoying it. And I like the uh, the book a lot better. And the only Jane Austen book I'll ever own, Pride and Prejudice. I struggled through this. I hated every second of it. I have two copies of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, which is another one of my absolute favorites. Um, the English Patient by Michael Ondanchi. I am mispronouncing that, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't really like this one either. It took me a while to get used to. The writing style is really different and pretty advanced. And then I have a play, um, Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe, that I stole from school because I loved it so much. It's essentially about Dr. Faustus making a deal with um, Mephistopheles for the best life, but he has to spend eternity in hell. This book is by Virginia Woolf, and that is A Room of One's Own. If you've ever read anything by Virginia Woolf, you know how um, complex and uh, really advanced her writing style is, so it took me a little while to get used to this, but I did enjoy it. Um, I now have Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. This was a fantastic book. I read this for a, um, I think it was a women in literature class. And for that class as well, I read Jamaica Kincaid's Annie John, which was another fantastic read. And then I read um, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. I was expecting a lot more from this book, and I think I would have benefited reading this book um, in a classroom setting to really understand a lot of the themes, because... I went through sort of a little phase where I wanted to read all the dystopian books, and this one fell short for me. Although I read Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury and loved every second of it, and I really enjoyed this edition because it even has a, a nice feeling towards it. Now if you don't know what the Folio Society is, it's this website um, and company based out of London, England, where they make really nice editions of books. So I've been going through a little phase buying these, and I got um, this one for free. It's year-round things to do with little exciting things to do depending on um, the month and the weather. 
I also have Alice in and Wonderland, uh, the books. It comes, it came with the two, and they're illustrated beautifully. So that's what I love the most about um, the Folio Society is that it's illustrated really beautifully. Despite the uh, the heavy price, they're worth it. I next have from Folio Society, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks, which is about um, a bunch of neurobiological um, case studies. So, I haven't read it yet, but when I have some free time, I will. It's, it's really illustrated nicely. Um, this one is more pictures as opposed to the other, the other Folio Society books that I have. The next one, which is probably my favorite, is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Now this one um, is one of my favorite uh, classics, and it's really illustrated nicely. If you've read this book, you can appreciate um, how nice these images are, and they really reflect um, what Margaret Atwood is saying in her book. The last Folio Society book I have is 1984 by George Orwell. I have a few copies of this lying around. I actually got this at a secondhand bookstore in my um, in my city, and when I picked it up and brought it to cash out, the um, the guy who owns it was looking at it really longingly, like he didn't want to <laughs> want to sell it to me, like it was a mistake that he put it on the sh on the shelf. So I uh, I got away with a steal. I only ended up paying like twenty dollars for it, and the book is actually worth a lot more. I got. Um, a bind up of some of Ray Bradbury's short stories, so The Martian Chronicles, The Illustrated Man, and The Golden Apple of the Sun from Barnes and Noble. I couldn't pass up this really beautiful book, however, it's not illustrated. Um, I, I got this little statue of Shakespeare with one of his plays. I haven't been brave enough to open it for fear that it'll break. And it's actually a funny story because I've seen it on eBay for like $20. And I didn't look at the dimensions uh, before I bought it, and I bought it, and this came in, and I was really disappointed that it was so small, because I thought it was, like, a bigger size, but, oh well. Um, I have a really old copy of Othello and A Midsummer's Night's Dream. I got this at a farmer's market for, like, 50 cents. I like um, just how old it is and compact they are. And then I have um, Shakespeare's complete works, including every single one of his plays and sonnets in this massive book so it's it's really hard to read. So my next shelf doesn't really have any order to it I'm just gonna place whatever fit. So we have the first in the Shatter Me series by Tahara Mafi, um, the first in the Across the Universe series by Beth Revis with the beautiful cover. I have all six of the Vampire Academy by Michelle Mead as well as the first four in the Bloodline series by Rochelle Mead. Also have the first three in the Crossfire series, I think it is, by Sylvia Day. Um, they were okay, nothing spectacular. And then The Darkest Minds and Never Fade by Alexandra Bracken, which were phenomenal. And, of course, Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. And then we have the five books in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. I got this for $20 at Costco uh, for the whole set, so I couldn't turn that down. And then here is my sort of comic book collection. So we have uh, Dexter. It's a bind-up of the the first, the original Dexter series that Jeff, Jeff Lindsay and the illustrator um, wrote. It was fantastic. I didn't like the ending, though. It, was, it felt rushed and not really completed to me. Volumes 1 through 15 of The Walking Dead. I think I'm at 12 or 11. And then the more traditional comics. I have Dexter Down Under by Jeff Lindsay and the same illustrator. Which is the first issue. And then the first issue of Alex Plus Ada by Jonathan Luna and Sarah Vaughn. So when the Pretty Little Liars uh, video TV show started, I went on a little Pretty Little Liars kick and started reading them. I read the first eight in the series and absolutely enjoyed them and loved how it wrapped up in the last book. But then Sarah Shepard decided to write a few more. I didn't. I ended up reading all the way to Pretty Little Secrets and didn't like the way the story was going and felt 
forced. It wrapped up nicely. There was no need for these books, so I sort of just stopped. I couldn't handle it anymore. And then I recently read Angel Fall by Suzanne E. and loved every second of it. I would definitely recommend this to anyone. I have the first four books in the Vampire Diaries series. They have two books in each of these, uh, sort of a bind up. I didn't like where the series was going. I definitely liked the TV show a million times better. Then I have the, the Immortal series by Alison Noel. I can't believe I got through all six of them. By the end of the second one, it, the story just got frivolous and stupid. The first two sort of filled the void after Twilight, and then the rest um, I just couldn't stand. I didn't like the whole auras and energies thing. I don't really believe in that or anything. So the series didn't really do it for me. If you do like that kind of new age things, the series is definitely for you. It covers a lot of it. And you could really identify with that. And then we have Aragon, Aaron Morgenstern's The Night Circus, which is such a aesthetically pleasing book. She's able to communicate these impossible and very detailed ideas through the pages. And it was a beautiful, a really beautiful book. And then the first two books in the Dustland series by Moira Young, so that's Blood Red Road and Rebel Heart. I picked this up because it was supposed to be better than the Hunger Ga uh, the Hunger Games, and they were okay. I am not going to finish the series because it didn't uh, pique my interest as much as I thought it would. And I have Bridget Jones's Diary, which I read for a women in literature class again, and this was actually a really funny um, book. There's a lot of British slang in that you have to get over and sort of look at. I think there's a glossary at the end for different terms. So this was a really fun book, and the movie was pretty good too. The last three books on my shelf are the Fifty Shades series by E.L. James, which consists of Fifty Shades of Grey, Fifty Shades Darker, and Fifty Shades Freed. I picked this series up because I wanted to see what the hype was about. It was alright. Um, I don't know if I would recommend it to anyone. I think I would recommend Sylvia Day's Crossfire series over this one. The next shelf sort of houses my uh, more series, I guess you could say. And my bookmarks. I sent a letter to Jennifer Armentrout and she sent me a lot of bookmarks and swag. So this is what primarily what this is. But I have um, some Harry Potter bookmarks, an eye break for snacks, pandas, since I love pandas. So the first book that I have here is Cassandra Clare's Shadow Hunter Codex. I bought the special edition off of Books A Million because I thought it was absolutely beautiful. Like that is so nice. And then it's got a sort of silhouette of the cup. And the, the book has a really nice feel to it. And it's got the cold pages with the bookmark. And then when you open the inside, it's got the beautiful sort of mural painting. And on the back. And just the book in general is really pretty. And I have the Mortal Instruments series. Uh, the first five. And the next one is coming out. And as a little side note, every one of my Cassandra Clare books are signed by her except the Shadowhunters Codex. Um, I convinced my boyfriend to take me all the way up to Toronto to get them signed. And since we were so close to the beginning, she had signed all of my books. And then pretty much after our group went through, it was only a four book limit. So I got every single one of them signed. And then her Clockwork series. And then over here, I have the little divergent um, poster thing. And then this came with my copy of Allegiant. I guess it was like a promo thing for before Allegiant came out. As well as a little pin. Then of course we have a Susan Collins um, Hunger Games series trilogy. And then Divergent trilogy. And then I have Agatha Christie's ABC Murders. I went through a sort of mystery kick. This wasn't um, as good as I thought it would be. I just, I think that this isn't the first book to start with um, Agatha Christie. And then for another mystery book, um, 10 by Gretchen McNeil, which is sort of um, taken from And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. This is really fantastic. It's a bunch of, it's about a bunch of kids 
on um, an island and then they start dying off. Then we have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ranked and Riggs. And then of course we have John Green's A Fault in Our Stars. This is my only John Green book that I own. And then I think this is the only non-fiction book that I own and that is Brain on Fire, My Month of Madness by Suzanne Callahan. Um, I would recommend this to anyone who's interested in psychology or um, neuroscience. Okay, now we have my textbooks and my TBR pile. So here are just some of the the English textbooks that I've taken and then the psychology textbooks for classes that I've taken. So onto my TBR pile. I have Smoke by Ellen Hopkins and then I got Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, which is an adaptation from a play, I think. I got this for like $2 at the Value Village in my town. I also got Lux by Anna Goberson. I heard a few good things about it, and the cover really is what kind of attracted me. So I'm pretty excited to read this. I got This Is Not A Test by Courtney Summers. And this takes place during the zombie apocalypse, but it's focused more on the relationship dynamics as opposed to the actual zombies. And then we have World After by Susan E., which is the second book to Angel Fall. And then I'm currently reading Unravel Me by Tahara Mafi, which is the second book to Shatter Me. Alright, so the next book I have in my TBR is Such Wicked Intent by Kenneth Opal. And it is the second book in the apprenticeship of Victor Frankenstein. And the first book is This Dark Endeavor. The next book I have is Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. I haven't read Gone Girl yet or anything by her, but this one seemed pretty interesting. The next book I have is Cinder by Marissa Meyer, which is the first book in the Lunar Chronicle series. Next book I have is The Fall of Five by Pithecus Lore. I think this is the fifth book in the um, Lore and Legacy series. The next two books I have are The Evolution of Mara Dyer and The Becoming of Mara Dyer, The Becoming being the first one in the, I think it's a trilogy, by Michelle Hodkin. And then I have The Fifth Wave by I, Rick Yancey. I heard amazing things about these. I got this for a gift, so I don't know what it's about, but it's Barney's version by uh, Mordecai Richler. This Girl by Colleen Hoover. The next book I got is Ignite Me by Tahara Mafi, which is the third book in the Shatter Me series, which I plan on reading once I finish Unravel Me and Fracture Me. The last, well, second last book on my TBR is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. The book on my TBR is Margaret Atwood's Mad Adam, which is the third and final book in the Mad Adam trilogy. 